David Brewster here, and this is the three-year anniversary special, and I can't believe Late Night Lessons is three years old, but time flies when you're making videos and content like this. Like, it just seems like yesterday I started, but technically January 26th of 2019's when this channel, you know, debuted or whatever. It's also Eddie Van Halen's birthday today, so happy birthday, Eddie. We miss you. But uh, this channel, you know, definitely has surprised me, because I didn't really think anything was going to happen. I was afraid I'd maybe waited too long, and when I actually had the free time and the technology, you know, in my lap. When I dove in, of course, you know, when I initially started posting videos, I could hear crickets chirping because I didn't have very many followers and subscribers in the beginning. But now we have over 70,000 subscribers, 6.1 million views and counting. So thank you. I can definitely tell there's a lot of happy people out there watching. And that inspires me and it pushes me, you know, to kind of, you know, further this along and keep going. So the first thing I want to talk about is there's a lot of new, you know, viewers out there. I just picked up like 3,000, you know, new subscribers just in the last two weeks. So I'm going to flash this image of a program guide. And that's going to help you understand like the different shows and channels and playlists on the Late Night Lessons channel. And I've received some messages from people asking where I went to school, and I have talked about this in a few episodes, but I went to a school in Atlanta, Georgia at the Atlanta Institute of Music, or AIM, and I'm an honors graduate from AIM, and that's a very prestigious school. You know, it originally was a branch of MI or GIT out in Hollywood, and it was a satellite campus, you know, in Atlanta, and eventually became its own school. I loved AIM. You know, definitely, uh, you know, great instructors. I made a lot of friends, and I learned a lot. It really pushed me and almost drowned me in all this music theory and, and information, but I loved it. You know, I felt like I was a dry sponge when I went in and I came out with my head full of all these ideas and theory and all this stuff. It exposed me to jazz and helped me push even further into, you know, music theory and modes and songwriting and all this stuff and definitely AIM's a great school. So that's where I went to school. I've also received quite a few messages about my books and also lessons that appeared in Guitar Player and Premier Guitar. So I do have 10 published books with Hal Leonard, Cherry Lane, and Centerstream Publications. And I've also written for Guitar Player and Premier Guitar Magazine over the years. So I have like 22 lessons, I think, in Guitar Player. Like a half dozen, I think, with Premier Guitar. And I've written for, you know, websites. And I've taught for School of Rock and Guitar Center and a whole bunch of different, you know, schools and music stores and stuff like that. So I'm a definitely an educationally minded, you know, musician. I've played in bands and toured, you know, a few different times with some different groups. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to clear the air and let everybody know about my background as far as school and publications and published material, just to really clear the air here. I've also received a lot of messages about notation, like tabs or transcriptions for some of these lessons I've posted. And there's, you know, approaching 500 lessons on this channel. And on Patreon, which Late Night Lessons does have a Patreon account and a growing number of supporters. So thank you, Patreon supporters. You're literally keeping the lights on here. But on Patreon, you can find PDF and guitar profiles, you know, notating a lot of these lessons. And it's mainly the lick lessons, like Three for All, Breaking Chords, Scales and Tails, Brewster's Millions of Rants. And not so much the chord play episodes, because a lot of the songs and that material is protected by copyright, which Hal Leonard owns the copyright and print rights for a lot of this music. And that's one of my publishers, so I don't really want to get on their bad side or get in trouble, because really, like, a cease and desist could happen. So I'm trying to skate around those copyright issues, and I haven't really notated very many. There's like a handful of chord play episodes that are notated. But you can find, you know, all those... There's like over 200, you know, PDF files. Also my uh, instructional method, Fretboard Fitness, which is only available for Patreon supporters. And that's really just a, a method, you know, with a series of exercises and warm-ups and all these different things to really, you know, strengthen your technique. And you can find that on Patreon too. I'm in the process of putting a new method together that's going to be available on Patreon alongside Fretboard Fitness. And the next method's called Shred School, and I did mention this last year, and I'm putting this together. It's going to be a PDF and guitar profile along with a video, which is similar to what I did for uh, Fretboard Fitness. But Shred School is literally a technique guide. You know, it works you through picking and, you know, fingering and legato and string skipping and tapping and all these different things that you find in Shred Guitar. 
but it's not really a Shred guitar method. Anybody could use it, you know, jazz player or blues player or somebody, because it really is just a technique book. But Shred School is coming to Patreon. And after I release Shred School, I'm going to put together a chord focused method, and it's a similar, you know, process. It's going to be available on Patreon, PDF, Guitar Pro, and a video, but it's only for Patreon, you know, supporters. But that's going to focus on chords. I think I'm actually just going to call it chord play. And I'm going to take all these different ideas that, you know, we're approaching 200 videos in the chord play, you know, series. I'm going to take all these different chord types and sus chords and add nine and all this different stuff and create a method based on chords. But it directly, you know, relates to the lessons on the channel. Next up is the Late Night Lessons pedal board, and I've had a lot of people ask about gear, like what pedals I'm using, or what amp I'm using, what pickups are in my guitars, and stuff like that. But the Late Night Lessons pedal board, I mainly use one setup, and then whenever I kind of flash like a different pedal, it could be like the fuzz pedals, or compressor, or something like that, and that just means I'm changing something on the pedal board. But, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm basically using what's on this image right here. Aside from the pedal board, I've had a lot of people ask about my rig, like what amp I'm using or what I'm actually doing over here, you know, with the uh, the Gator Retro Rack, the Behringer V-Amp Pro, and the Headrush Cabinet. So this is literally the Late Night Lessons rig. I have other amps and, and equipment sitting right over there, but this actually works for what I'm doing, you know, here on the channel. And I don't have any mics running even on this laptop, and my interface and stuff are over here. But I'm literally recording this using a GoPro, what, Black 8 with the mic attachment, you know, the mic upgrade. And everything you're hearing and seeing is captured on this GoPro. So I'm not even running mics. This rig works for me and what I'm doing. Now, this rig may not work for you and what you're doing. But from what I'm doing right here, this is perfect. It's very simple. It's very easy. I can knock these videos out, you know, pretty easily. Now, if I started to compound my studio here and add microphones and interface and all this stuff and have everything, you know, all connected and, and tangled up, it's probably going to slow me down. It's going to make this more complicated and much harder to do. And this is pretty easy, honestly, with the GoPro and my rig, you know, set up like this. But here's an image with what I'm using. I have noticed in the comments section a few people literally bashing my gear and telling me what I should have instead. You know, you should get a Kemper and you should get this expensive camera and all these you know, expensive mics and stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. Is that stuff free or are you going to help me pay for it or whatever? Because I have noticed online there's a lot of people and it's like every week they're buying a guitar or they have like a $10,000, you know, amp rig or whatever. And it's like, are you... Do you have like a trust fund or something, or you just won the lottery? How are you buying all that equipment? Granted, some of it might be endorsements and that kind of stuff. But I think a lot of those comments are coming at me because you don't really know anything about me, really. You're just seeing me here on YouTube, you know, sitting in this chair, you know, playing guitar. But about 15 years ago, I had a Behringer endorsement, uh, Bagheera and Behringer. And they sent me some amps. You know, I was using the Vampire, you know, for lessons. They sent me a Bagheera half stack. They sent me a, a, a Behringer keyboard amp and a Vampire head and a whole bunch of stuff. So I had an endorsement deal with uh, Bagheera and Behringer about 15 years ago. That's why I'm using Behringer because I have kind of a history with the company. So yeah, I mean, I realized this, you know, V Amp Pro was cheap. I think I bought this for like 60 or $70 on Reverb. So it's nothing to write home about. But it sounds really good. Trust me, it sounds way better, you know, sitting in this room than it does through my camera. Like, the tone is actually there. It has a great sound. So I'm sorry if you're mad about my rig, but this is what I'm using. I've had a few viewers that actually went out and they either bought a Vampire, you know, combo or an amp, or they bought a V-Amp Pro, and they've been asking me about tone tips, like, what sound are you using? And I have talked about this, you know, in another episode. But I'm going to mention this again, just in case you're curious, like, how am I getting this sound? So my favorite sound in the VAMP Pro or the Vampire Amp is 2B. That's like a preset. And it's basically a high gain, like Marshall kind of Van Halen kind of tone. So when I hit 2B, it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
Now that's not the sound I use. So the first thing I do is I turn the gain all the way off. I turn the volume all the way up. I turn the bass, the mid, and the treble all the way off. I'm not even looking at what I'm doing because I've done this so many times. So the gain's all the way off, volume's all the way up, bass, mid, and treble all the way down. And then I tap this tap tempo button a couple times, like that. And then I turn the reverb and delay down, and now it sounds like this. All right, a lot less gain, a lot less distortion and everything. But I mainly use that sound as a pedal platform. So now I'm going to hit the Sparks booster, and it kind of brings up, you know, the level. Hit the tube screamer and get even more overdrive. There's without the booster. Tube Screamer adds more overdrive and distortion, obviously. And without the Tube Screamer, it just kind of adds a little bit more bite to it. distortion I basically turn up the gain or overdrive from my amp and that you know basically saturates the sound and creates more distortion so now I'm gonna basically turn it up and it's basically on like like 10 or 11 o'clock and it sounds like this <laughs> Streamer too. You know, really cool sound, and it may not be like the greatest guitar tone ever, but it doesn't sound like anybody else. I don't sound like I'm using a Kemper. I don't sound like I'm using a Marshall or a Boogie or whatever. I'm using something unusual in a very unusual way, but it has a very distinct and kind of unique sound, which is kind of the whole point. So if you've been watching my channel and you haven't figured this out yet, then you're probably not really paying attention, but I am a use what you have musician. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I've had tons of different rigs and amps and setups over the years. I used to have the full ADA, you know, set up the MP1, ADA cabinets, power amp, foot switch, and the preamp. Had a Marshall half stack and a Fender Supersonic, and I've had a giant rack rig with a what a Marshall EL3400 with a Roland GP100 you know preamp processor. I've had various combo amps, Seymour Duncan 100 watt convertible, the PV Bandit, which everybody's had a PV Bandit, I think. You know, so I've had tons of different amps over the years. And the weird thing about these Behringers and the Vampire is it's the only amp that I have that's still working, and it didn't blow up or it didn't die or have some costly, you know, tube amp repair or whatever. It's literally like the only amp I've bought and it's still with me. I've had that Vampire Combo since 2004 and I've gigged and taught and recorded and done all sorts of stuff with that amp. And it's what, like a $200, you know, piece of Chinese crap, but it sounds good. really what I'm saying here is I don't want to be somebody else. I want to be myself. I want to find the instruments and pedals and rig and amps and all these different things that speak to me. You know, I don't care what Steve Vai or Steve Ray Vaughan or Hendrix or whoever used. I'm focused on me now. You know, like in my early years as a teenager, yeah, I was chasing those tones and buying, you know, various pedals and stuff with the hope that, hey, you know, maybe this is going to help me sound like Gilmore or, you know, Hendrix or somebody. But now I'm not really worried about that. I don't, I don't want to pretend to be somebody else. I want to be myself and find myself as a musician. 
And a lot of that has to do with gear, you know, like the strings and picks that you use, the pedals you use, the amps, everything, the cables, you know, everything that you have in your, you know, studio and in your arsenal is important. And there's enough different products and, you know, brands and stuff out there that you can literally find a very, you know, elusive and kind of signature rig where you're not really using like the same amp that somebody else is. And then look at some legendary players. Look at somebody like Sean Lane, the late great, you know, shred guitar legend. Sean loved Holmes amps, which nobody remembers Holmes, but they were a cheap amp, not popular, you know, from back in the day. But that's where he got his tone with Holmes. Or think of Van Halen, of course, you know, the late great legend's birthday is today. Think of Eddie's classic rig, you know, the Frankenstrat with the Franken rig. It looked like it was about to blow up or catch on fire. But listen to that tone that he got out of this mismatched, you know, kind of junky rig, but it sounded amazing. So really to wrap this up, you know, if you want to sound like a million bucks, you don't really have to spend a million bucks. You can find these different pieces of gear and assemble your own rig and tone and sound. And it's going to blow everybody's doors off because it doesn't sound like somebody else. It sounds like you. It's just exciting. I'm very happy to see everybody, you know, so happy and excited, inspired, thanking me telling me and sharing like some of the stuff you've done with some of this material, whether it's chords or licks or whatever. That's what this is all about. I want to help you. And, you know, obviously I want to grow this and, and kind of continue to see where this goes. But at the end of the day, you know, first and foremost, the first thing I want to do is help the viewers out there. I want to inspire you. I want to help you maybe learn something new or learn to, you know, do something that you couldn't do before and just really approach the guitar you know, in kind of a relaxed, creative, playful way, which is the way I think you should do it, you know, as an artist or as a musician. You shouldn't lock on to anything. Just relax, you know, be free, experiment, play around, use your imagination. You never know what might happen. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to that lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.